Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Sensor, and today we're going to talk about running a single shaker sign test. Today we're going to talk about setting up a cola channel. Uh, we're going to talk about inputting the sign reference profile, setting up the test schedule, and we're also going to show you our manual ramp mode in sign. We are recording this, and the recording will be made available on our YouTube channel following uh, the end of the presentation. Um, for previous videos, please check out our YouTube channel. It's a data physics YouTube channel. Today is our single shaker sign test, and uh, we have not yet set up the date for our next test, uh, but we will get that set up and emailed out to everybody uh, what our schedule for the rest of the year is. So we'll dive right in. And uh, this is the channel table, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we've gone over some of these parameters in our previous videos, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Uh, the one thing to note in particular with SIGN is this COLA setup. COLA stands for Constant Output Level Adapter, and uh, what that means is you have a secondary source that you can set up uh, that's going to put out the same frequency as the drive, at a constant voltage of uh, plus or minus one volt. And uh, that's useful when you have an external data acquisition system or a stroboscope that you want to synchronize with the controller. As we mentioned before, uh, down here you can set up your shaker and put in things like your system mass, test article mass, etc., to uh, be able to do a feasibility report on whether the shaker can run the test with the mass that you have on it. The other thing I'd like to note for this particular test, we are using two control channels and we're gonna average these together for average control in sign. Uh, this test fixture that I have on here is a cantilever beam and uh, it's why you might wanna use average control in sign. We go to our sign tab and the first thing is our reference uh, profile setup. And your units are set up across the top. As per usual, we mentioned the feasibility study. You can see with the mass that I have on here, I'm only using up a small portion of what the shaker can do. And uh, down when we get to the actual reference profile here, uh, you'll notice that sign has different parameters from random that we covered last time. Uh, you still have a frequency and amplitude breakpoint, but uh, your units are in displacement, velocity, or acceleration. There's a couple different options. There's constant acceleration, velocity, or displacement, and variable acceleration, velocity, or displacement. Now, uh, the reason you would use uh, different options here um, is this is a good example of uh, this, right? You, you might have a test profile spec that says run at 0.02 inches displacement up to a maximum velocity of two inches per second and a maximum acceleration of two Gs. And that's exactly how we've set this up here. And uh, the nice thing about the software is uh, what you do here is put in your amplitude units, and maybe you don't know what these breakpoints are specifically, but the software will calculate them for you. Just pop in a zero here and hit apply, and it finds where these breakpoints are. Uh, another thing to note is constant acceleration is always going to give you a straight line here. Um, so for example, if I wanted to go out to two kilohertz, uh, at three G's, I'd put in another uh, two breakpoints here. Hit apply, and you can see essentially what this does is put a step uh, into the profile. Now, uh, this is where the steps option comes into play here. Uh, you might see that the abort line is is real close to uh, the reference line here. So if there's any um, miss from the controller due to the dynamics of the system, 
uh, you might actually hit this abort line, even though you don't really want it to abort there. So you can put in some uh, tolerances there and um, it moves those lines. Just put some numbers in here as an example. The other thing is uh, a variable acceleration. If you didn't want to have this step like this and you wanted a smooth transition, you can put in uh, variable accelerations here. And maybe you want something in the middle. So you can see the difference between what constant and variable acceleration does. Other things to note in the sign profile is uh, rescaling, uh, and you can also import external uh, files now. Control parameters is the next thing to show in sign that you might need to do. Um, one of the things that we have here is uh, you can put different um, steps in your sweep table up here. So let's say you wanted to have uh, two different sweep rates up to 500 hertz. You want four octaves per minute higher than 400 hertz. You want two octaves per minute. That's how you would uh, adjust that. Um, this is where you'd put in your sweep rate. Uh, for this test, I did a pretty standard four octaves per minute for aerospace. Uh, you can also put in a specific time and uh, these two fields are linked. So uh, it'll calculate the rate if you put in a duration and if you put in a rate, it'll calculate the duration. Magnitude sensitivity, each participation. Uh, these affect how the control loop uh, corrects for uh, the errors uh, that it encounters along the way. So uh, if you deviate from, from the amplitude, uh, the magnitude sensitivity is basically going to adjust how quickly the drive signal is changed uh, from the previous drive. So you don't necessarily want to correct too fast or too slow. It can lead to control instability inside. Signal loss threshold is uh, the parameter that tells the controller when uh, the voltage signal is too low, um, basically telling the controller when an accelerometer has stopped functioning, i.e. if you read a voltage level on the accelerometer that's lower than this, uh, we consider that to be uh, a lost signal. And abort sensitivity is another parameter that can kind of adjust for difficult sign tests. What this is, is how many um, subsequent uh, frames of data that come in that can be out of abort tolerance before uh, the test is actually aborted. Um, typically, this value by default is one. Uh, we do have kind of a difficult little test article here, so I increase that. Now you notice since we have two control channels, we have this multi-channel mode. Uh, I'm picking an average control. Uh, down here is where you would change your sweep rate if you wanted a linear sweep rate, sweep rate or a sweep rate in decades per minute. You can change that down here. Points per sweep determines how many lines in your result uh, that, that are saved, basically your delta frequency along your uh, x-axis. Um, this does not affect the resolution of control at all. Uh, measurement frequency ratio is, is another parameter. This is, this is determining what the oversample rate is of the incoming uh, time stream. Uh, we don't want to sample at exactly the frequency we need. We want to sample more than the frequency we need so we get a nice uh, quick control loop. Uh, filter type adjust the tracking filter and sign. Uh, you don't typically want to change this, um, but this is how you change the shape and uh, parameters of the tracking filter. 
and then startup shutdown and startup level. Same as in random, this determines how fast the controller starts up, uh, how fast it shuts down, and uh, the initial voltage of the drive signal uh, based on the pretest conditions. Pretest, same as before. Uh, signals, nothing new here. Uh, we're just going to skip right over that. Last thing to talk about in the test setup for sign is the run schedule. Now, uh, data physics defines one sweep as going all the way from the low frequency to the high frequency or all the way from the high frequency back down to the low frequency. So one full sweep is all the way from 20 hertz to 1000 hertz. Now we have this set to up, so we know we're going to start at the low frequency. If I wanted to start at the high frequency, I could select down and we'd start from the high frequency and go down to the low frequency. And uh, over here is where you'd set the number of sweeps that you want to do and the save intervals. Uh, and you'll notice I've checked manual ramp here to show you what that does. If you don't have this checked, we're going to do an automatic ramp. Some other parameters you can put in the run schedule. Uh, we do have do and loop if you want to set up a repetitive uh, schedule that uh, does the steps that you outline here a number of times for a number of loops. Full sweep is what we have here. You also have sweep, dwell, dwell series, and then level and sweep rate are if you want to change the test level and the sweep rate between these different steps in the run schedule. So a dwell series is also uh, referred to as a stepped sign. Um, what this does is dwell at a particular frequency uh, as outlined here. So this would three seconds then go to 21 hertz, dwell for 30 seconds, go to 22 hertz, dwell for 30 seconds, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is just a straight frequency dwell where you set your frequency and, and duration. Um, and of course, uh, partial sweeps, you can just go uh, in between uh, certain frequencies. So let's say instead of this full thing, I just want to go between 500 and 600 hertz, that would be a partial sweep. I'm just going to hit cancel here since we already have this set up before. So uh, to run a, a sign test, we'll hit initialize to load the test down on the 901 I'm using. Then I hit start to initialize the pretest. And the pretest is running. You can see my coherence here on the control channels. It's very good. Okay, uh, my pretest reports. I'll check here. Everything looks good. Signal to noise is good and I'm using up a small portion of the range of my accelerometers. So I'm going to go ahead and start the test. And uh, now we're at that minus 9 dB. And we are in the manual ramp mode. So what you'll notice here is I'm at this start level minus 9 dB and uh, in manual mode and I'm not doing anything, right? You can see the, the sweep information here. So uh, what this allows me to do is manually ramp up. Let's say I wanna go from minus nine to minus three dB. I type that in, I hit enter, and then I'm gonna start ramping up. Now, why you would wanna do manual ramp is uh, to prevent any possible overshoot that you might have uh, from a difficult test article or uh, just a plain difficult test article uh, that has trouble zeroing in uh, on the start amplitude. So this allows you to uh, let the test kind of slowly come up to level um, more slowly than maybe the automated process would do. So now I've ramped up to zero dB, you can see, and uh, I'm looking, I'm all ready to go, so I'm gonna turn off manual mode 
and that's going to start running on my schedule. And uh, what you can see here is uh, this pink trace is the end of my cantilever beam that I have on my test fixture. I have a nice resonance right here around 30 hertz. And uh, what you see is the, the dark bold line is my average control and my two lighter dotted lines here are my two control channels that I have here. And you can see how this average control works here. So as one uh, accelerometer is going through a resonance, the other accelerometer might be going through an anti-resonance. That's where they cross here. Um, so that makes the control uh, a lot easier to handle when you have uh, dynamics on your test article. And that is the end of one sweep completed successfully. If you do have any questions, please feel free to email me directly, uh, chris.sensor at dataphysics.com or visit us on the web at dataphysics.com. Thank you for your time and have a great weekend.